We continue this series of Dave Sam and a Man and His Camera Part 1 Railways with a selection of photographs that Dave captured on the Great Western region in the early 1960s and on other regions where steam was still evident during and after the steam's demise on the southern region on the 9th of July 1967. To capture these photographs, Dave went on various rail tours that were specially organised to visit depots in the north of the country where steam locomotives were still active. WD Class 90258, minus smoke box shed plate, stands proud in the evening sunlight at Oxford MPD on the 13th of November 1965. Another locomotive in the adjacent road has also been robbed of a smoke box shed plate and number plate. Class 61004 MT 6126 trundles through Oxford on the 13th of November 1965. The majority of the class were employed on local suburban services in and out of Paddington Station, were mainly allocated to Old Oak Common, Oxford, Reading, Slough and South All Sheds. After the suburban services were dieselised, they could be found across the whole of the Western region on British Railways. Water suddenly overflows from the tender of, as the driver of original Battle of Britain class 340791141 squadron hastens to close the gate valve of the water column at Oxford on the 13th of November 1965. This shot shows a close-up of the nameplate of original Battle of Britain class 340791141 squadron at Oxford on the 13th of November 1965. Rebuilt Merchant Navy Class 35023 Holland Africa Line starts away with the Pines Express from Oxford on the 13th of November 1965. BR Standard 9F Class 92204, coupled to an unidentified GWR tank, moves away from Oxford Station on the 13th of November 1965. Dave has taken this photo from the tender of GWR 4900 class 6868 Penross Grange, showing the cab layout. This photo shows a general view of Oxford MPD on the 13th of November 1965. GWR 4900 class 4920 Dumbleton Hall, minus her nameplates, awaits her fate on the 13th of November 1965. She was withdrawn from service the following month after 36 years of service. Standard Class 9F 92235 also awaits her fate at Oxford on the 13th of November 1965. She was also withdrawn from service the following month after only seven years of service. Steam envelops the cab and obscures the fireman's view as GWR 6959 Class 6961 Stedham Hall, minus her nameplates, moves light engine to an unknown destination. GWR 6959 class number 6963 Throwley Hall is seen here leaving Reading with the Wessex Downsman number 2 LCGB rail tour on the 2nd of May 1965. BR Standard Class 9F 92128 stops at Didka at signals with a freight service.
another BR standard class 9F 92007 passes through Didcot light engine on the 2nd of May 1965. The fireman of GWR 6959 class 6983 Otterington Hall, minus her smoke box number and nameplates, keeps a close watch on the ground signal at Didcot on the 2nd of May 1965. 6983 was withdrawn from service two months later. GWR 6800 class 6820 Kingstone Grange passes through Didcot with a loaded stone train on the 2nd of May 1965. GWR 6959 class 7928 Wolf Hall is looking resplendent at Didcot sometime in 1964. She was withdrawn from service in March 1965. BR Standard Class 9F 92220 Evening Star stands forlorn in a line of other Standard Class locomotives. 92220 was completed at Swindon at a cost of £33,500 in March 1960 as the 999th and last steam locomotive built by BR. It was turned out in GWR green livery with a copper cap chimney and given the name Evening Star. As the last engine to be built, it was earmarked for restoration as soon as it was built. She now resides as a static exhibit at the National Rail Museum at York. GWR 2800 class 3200 stands berthed outside Didcot MPD in 1964. She was withdrawn from service in January 1965. GWR 4900 class 6928 Underley Hall waits for the exit signal at Didcot MPD in 1964. Allocated to her final depot at Didcot in March 1965, she was withdrawn from service four months later. Warship Class D602 Bulldog stands berthed outside of Didcot MPD in 1965. One of the first batch of five warship class diesel hydraulic transmission locomotives, she was withdrawn from service in July 1967. In original maroon livery, Western D1001 Western Pathfinder stands outside Didcot MPD in 1962. Built at Swindon Works, she was allocated to various WR depots during her lifespan and was eventually withdrawn from service in October 1976 following collision damage. Class 8F 48345 stops at Didcot with a loaded stone train in 1964. Allocated to Osbury in 1964, her last allocation was Trafford Park before being withdrawn from service in March 1968. GWR 6959 class number 6963 Throwley Hall waits for the starting signal at Reading Down Bay platform in 1964. The fireman of 6963 is busy with the shovel as the driver leans out of the cab to check the signal before departure. The interesting thing is that the driver is wearing a two-tone green lightweight BR jacket and cap that was issued to EMU or dual link drivers on the southern region at the time. It could be that the driver is from Basentuck depot 
or that he's transferred from a southern region depot to the western region. J27 class 65879 stands in Sunderland Shed on the 9th of September 1967. Post-war, the J27s stopped hauling goods trains, but they continued to haul heavy mineral trains. Withdrawals began in March 1959, but in June 1966, 36 were still putting in hard work hauling coal in County Durham and South Northumberland. The final J27s were withdrawn from the Blythe area, where they operated the short trip workings between the nearby coal field and shipping staiths. The last J27 was withdrawn in September 1967. Another group of J27s in Sunderland Shed on the 9th of September 1967 are 65855, 65811 and 65879. Only one J27 has been preserved. WD class 90009 looks in a sorry state at Sunderland South Dock on the 9th of September 1967. With rods off and what looks to be a huge hole in her right cylinder, she was probably considered irreparable. K1 class 62005 is about to work a farewell to steam special at Tyne Dock on the 9th of September 1967. A1 class 62005 was earmarked for preservation. She is currently working on the North Yorkshire and Moors Railway and is named Lord of the Isles. WD class locomotive 90382 awaits her fate at Sunderland on the 9th of September 1967. The driver of Black 5 45134 is checking with his fireman as they take water before continuing with the passenger service from Aylesbury on the 1st of January 1966. Designed by William Stanier, number 45134 was withdrawn from service at a last shed, Carnforth, on the 3rd of August 1968. Stania Black 5 45446 stands outside Marleybone Station on the 1st of January 1966. Built in 1937, she was withdrawn from service on the 11th of February 1967. BR Standard Class 5 MT 73000 shunts the empty coaching stock at Manchester Victoria Station on the 8th of July 1967. Black 5 45246 runs light engine tender first through Manchester Victoria Station on the 8th of July 1967. Black 5 45373 with feather flying from her safety valves departs Manchester Victoria Station with a passenger service. A group of enthusiasts gather at the platform end to record the scene of class leader BR Standard Class 5MT 73000 entering Manchester Victoria Station. The fireman of Stania 8F Class 48168 watches carefully as the locomotive takes water at Northwich on the cold winter's morning of the 21st of January 1968. The same day, shunting is in progress as Stania Class 8F48632 pulls some mineral wagons from the coaling point. The shunter catches a lift on the smoke box steps, his shunting pole resting between the buffer beam and the front coupling hook. Incredibly, 
no one seems to acknowledge the dangers of bystanders wandering around the track. There has been serious damage caused to the front end of this Black 5 seen at Edge Hill MPD on the 2nd of January 1968. Train spotters congregate at Liverpool's Edge Hill MPD as Black 5 45376 prepares to depart. Other Black 5s with similar coats of grime stand in other roads. BR Standard Class 9F 92017 stands outside the Shed at Crew MPD on the 25th of June 1967. Designed for British Railways by Robert Riddles, the Class 9F was the last in a series of standard locomotive classes designed for British Railways during the 1950s and was intended for use on fast heavy freight trains over long distances. It was one of the most powerful steam locomotive types ever constructed in Britain and successfully performed its intended duties. The class earned a nickname of spaceships due to its size and shape. The total number built was 251 production being shared between Swindon, 53, and Crew Works, 198. The last of the class, 92220, Evening Star, was the final steam locomotive to be built by British Railways in 1960. Withdrawals began in 1964, with the final locomotive removed from service in 1968. Several examples have survived into the preservation era in varying states of repair, including Evening Star. Private Class 4, number 43002, moves under the coal hopper at Crew MPD on the 25th of June 1967. Remaining in service until December 1967, she was withdrawn from Workington Shed to be scrapped in April 1968. An added bonus to be photographed that day was A4 Pacific number 4498 Sir Nigel Gresley, which had used the shed as its home base between rail tour duties. Crew depot again on the 25th of June 1967 and Stania class 5MT 44680 and Stania class 8F 48697 dominate the photograph. Two filthy looking WD class locomotives 90677 and 90478 wait for their next turn of duties at Hartlepool on the 9th of September 1967. No BR austerity 8Fs survived into preservation although a handful have been repatriated from overseas. Wonderfully ugly, but a no-frills machine, built for hard work, day in and day out. A group of schoolboy spotters, some carrying their duffel bags over their shoulders, head toward Crew South MPD on the 25th of June 1967. A number of steam locomotives to spot, and maybe cab before they all disappear forever. In the foreground of Crew South MPD on the 25th of June 1967, Stania Class 8F48548 waits for a next turn of duty, whilst in the adjacent road, BR Standard Class 75073 also waits patiently. Souvenir hunters have probably robbed the locomotive of a smokebox shed plate, now Chalk 5D, Stoke, and 75073 has also suffered the same fate plus a smoke box number plate is missing. Two Stania Class 8 F locomotives 48125 and 48460 with smoke box door open stand outside the shed at Crew South MPD. Designed for heavy freight duties 852 were built between 1935 and 1946 not all to LMS order as a freight version of William Stanier's successful Black 5 and the class saw service overseas during the Second World War. 
11 ATFs are known to exist. Of these, seven LMSBR locomotives have been preserved in the UK. An eighth member of the class has been repatriated to the UK from Turkey. In addition, several Turkish railway TCCD locomotives have been preserved in Turkey and at least one locomotive may have survived in Iraq. Two more are also visible underwater on the wreck of the SS Thistlegorm that was bombed by two German bombers during the Second World War whilst crossing the Red Sea. The bombs hit the ship and one of them directly in an ammunition hold. There was a huge explosion killing nine crew members and sinking the ship almost instantly. The wreck was discovered 15 years later by Jacques Cousteau and became popular for diving activities in the mid-1980s. When she sank, the ship was not only carrying the two locomotives, but also a wide range of supplies from rubber boots to Bedford trucks, BSA motorcycles, rifles and RAF equipment. BR Standard Class 2MT 78036 awaits her fate at Crew South MPD after being withdrawn from service on the 3rd of December 1966. Another Black 5, 44779, awaits a cutter's torch at Crew South MPD, a connecting rod stowed on the framing of the locomotive. Standard Class 9F 92156 was built at Crew Works in November 1957, withdrawn from service in July 1967. Stania Class 5MT 45054 waits for a next turn of duty at Crewe on 25 June 1967. A row of four 350HP diesel shunting locomotives also await their next movements. A line-up of locomotives at Trafford Park MPD, Manchester on the 8th of July 1967 including two Stania Class AFs, 48344 and 48454. The Standard Class 9F locomotives were highly regarded and considered to be the most thermally efficient steam locomotives ever to operate in Britain. In 1955, numbers 92020 to 92029 were built with Franco Crosti boilers, but the modification only improved them a little and was not considered to be worth the effort given that the end of steam in the UK was already in sight. They were subsequently rebuilt as conventional locomotives. Three heater sections were therefore removed leaving a single main boiler barrel smaller in diameter than those of the standard class 9 making them most distinctive. BR Standard Class 9F 92123 and 92013 have been standing in the rain for some time at Edge Hill MPD on the 2nd of January 1968, judging by the rust that's accumulated on their wheels. The coaling plant dominates the skyline. The not to be moved board on the buffer beam is clearly obvious as BR Standard Class 9F 92094 receives some serious attention to a right hand side cylinder and valve gear. Stania Class 8F 48665 awaits her next turn of duty at Edge Hill Depot. If a book publisher or magazine editor is seeking a suitable photo to grace a cover, then they need look no further than this superb Dave Salmon shot of Black 5, number 45376 at Edge Hill. Languishing in Heat and Mersey Shed on the 8th of July 1967 is Stania Class 8F 48208 alongside a host of other unidentified locomotives.
Sunlight streamed through the shed roof of, in this atmospheric shot of Class 8 logos numbers 48270, 48329 and 48464. Awaiting her next turn of duty, BR Standard Class 9F 92126 stands outside Eaton Mersey MPD. With safety valve blowing, BR Standard Class 9F 92126 prepares to leave Eaton Mersey MPD. Looking in the opposite direction at Eaton Mersey Shed, BR Standard Class 9F 92157 awaits her next turn of duty. A trio of locos at Heaton Merseyside MPD. From left to right, Class 8F 48695, 48731 and 48126. Class 5 MT 44661 heads a freight service as it passes Warrington Motive Power Depot with what looks like a nuclear flask on a low flat wagon. The same locomotive and train heads past Dave as it passes Warrington Motive Power Depot. Class 5 MT 45089 runs light engine 10 to 1st past Warrington Motive Power Depot. Class 5 numbers 44683 and 44949 stand in Manchester Victoria Station awaiting their next turn of duty. With cooling towers in the background, Class 5 45149 passes through Wigan with a passenger service comprised of at least one respectfully clean looking leading Mark II carriage. Class 8 F48165 stands outside Wigan Shed on the 8th of July 1967, having been withdrawn from the service on the 18th of March that year. Two Black Fives stand inside the shed at Wigan MPD, 44877 and 45231, waiting for their next turn of duty. BR Standard Class 4MT 76081 is still in steam at Wigan Shed on the 8th of July 1967. Not for long though, as she was withdrawn from service on the 22nd of July that year. Class 5 number 45395 stands on the top of a line of locomotives at Wigan MPD. Running tender first, class 5 number 45156, Ayrshire Yeomanry, arrives at Stockport with a coal train. The nameplates have already been removed as the loco was destined to be scrapped the following year. LMS Jubilee class 45596, Bahamas, minus her nameplates, and with her piston rods stowed on the framing, waits for a point with the scrap merchants at Stockport Edgeley MPD. However, following a long process of restoration, she is now back in fully working mainline running order. Black 5 45201 shunts a brake van at Speak Junction on the 2nd of January 1968. Built in 1935, she was withdrawn from service at Speak Junction MPD in April 1968. Standard Class 9F92054 takes water at Speak Junction MPD on the 2nd of January 1968. Built at Crew Works in 1955, she was withdrawn from service at Speak Junction MPD in April 1968.
looking to be at the end of her career, Standard Class 9F 92234 stands alone at Speak Junction MPD. Built and crew worked in 1958. She lasted until November 1968 before being withdrawn from service. Private Class 46437 stands on the top of a line of locomotives destined for the scrapyard at Newton Heath MPD. The others in the line are either numbers 46506 and number 46485. Two train spotters walk towards Patrickroff MPD and Coalhopper, where there's a good selection of locomotives to spot. Tanya Class 8F number 48335 moves light engine from Patricroft MPD to an unknown destination. Built at Harwich works in November 1943 as number 8335. She had only another year of life before being condemned and scrapped in July 1968. Class 8F 48491 runs tender first towards the coal hopper at Patricroft MPD to replenish her tender with coal. Minus her nameplates, BR Britannia class number 70039, Sir Christopher Wren, stands inside the shed at Patricroft MPD. A broader view of BR Britannia class 70039, Sir Christopher Wren, alongside BR Standard Class 5MT 73073. Both locomotives were withdrawn from service by the end of 1967. Fifteen-year-old BR Britannia Class 70014, Iron Duke, looks downtrodden and abject in appearance, a far cry from her best appearances on the prestigious Golden Arrow during the engine sojourn at Stewart's Lane Depot. Gone are the sparkling buffers the polished cylinder head covers, the fastidiously burnished paintwork, while many changes have occurred since leaving London some nine years prior. Ironically, one of Iron Duke's nameplates and a smoke box number plate, number 70014, fetched £8,000 and £3,600 respectively at the Great Central Railway auction on the 3rd of September 2022. Not forgetting the 18% sale fee, plus 20% VAT. Trio of Black Fives at Edgeley MPD. From left to right unknown, and number 44725 and 45454. This shows a view of Edgeley MPD on the 8th of July 1967. BR Standard Class 2MT 78013 stands in a line of condemned locomotives waiting to be scrapped. The last depot was Bolton MPD and was withdrawn from service in May 1967. A line-up of locomotives greet Dave as he visits Bolton MPD in May 1967. A further display of locomotives outside Bolton Shed, including Black Fives 48425, 45210, 48313, 48380 and 45260. BR Standard Class 9F number 92048 is seen here at Trafford Park MPD. Built at Crewe and allocated to Wellingborough in February 1955, her last shed was Birkenhead Bollington Street and she was withdrawn from service in September 1967. This photo shows a general view of Workington MPD. A proliferation of flying pigs was a prominent feature of Workington Shed's allocation being used on local freight turns as well as passenger services to Maryport and on to Carlisle Citadel Station, or directly eastwards to Penrith. 
also known as doodle bugs, these useful lightweight moguls were to be found all over the country with the possible exception of London city centre. I've at class number 41264 awaits her fate at Carlisle Upperby MPD. Black 544932 and BR Standard Class 4MT 75027 also await their fate at Carlisle Upperby MPD. Black 544902 with snow plough fitted awaits her next turn of duty at Carlisle Kingmore MPD on the 22nd of January 1968. Another fine BR Britannia class standing in the shed at Carlisle Kingmore is 70013 Oliver Cromwell. Withdrawn in August 1968, she was saved from the cutter's torch and is currently receiving an overhaul. BR Standard Class 9F 92022, fitted with Crossy Boiler, awaits her final appointment with a cutter's torch at Carlisle Kingmore. Built at crew and allocated to Wellingborough in March 1955, her last shed was Birkenhead, Mollington Street. She was scrapped at Campbell's at Airdrie in April 1968. All good things must come to an end, but the headlong rush to condemn 20-odd thousand steam engines during the 1960s was a tragic and shocking waste of money. Some engines were just five years old when their careers were terminated. This included recently overhauled engines in ex works condition, with plenty of life still left in them, which were eliminated for good. But then the need for speed was the driving force behind the 1955 modernisation plan. The desire for a fleet of more modern traction was paramount to the BTC, notwithstanding the wonderful role carried out by the rank and file of steam locomotives and their relative crews, or the shunters and the signalmen, the porters, guards, all of whom played their part in improving the stock of the railways to a position of strength following the difficult war years. <laughs>